Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Canary and Crown. This is crazy. So this is my very, very, very first live stream ever. And I have to tell you, it's a little bit nerve wracking. It's a little bit scary. I fully expect that no one will be watching, which is totally okay. Totally okay. <laughs> but if you are here watching, this is the Canarian Crown. On my channel, I talk about all things related to the British royal family. I'm just an American girl who happens to be really interested in the British royals. Um, it's just a hobby. Love it. And love to follow what they're up to. Um, so if you're here, thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome. I thought what I would do is just kind of chat about what's happening What's going on in the uh, world of the Royals right now? We are just about seven weeks from the coronation, which I'm excited about it. I kind of wish I was able to go to the coronation. Um, I I've never been to London. I've never been to England. Definitely a dream of mine. I want to go to England, specifically London, and um, go to Windsor, like, can't wait to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, I want to do it in either 2023 or 2024. Got to do it. So, but um, yeah, if you're here, if you could give this stream a thumbs up and say hi, let me know where you're watching from. And one of the most important things I think about doing live streams are you get to build a community. So I'm excited about building community with you guys. And if you've been watching my videos, thank you so much. Trying to build up the channel, trying to find my people, right? Because I know my people are out there. My people who are just love the royal family, who are super interested in what they're up to, who love British history. I know you guys are out there. So if you're here watching, if you could give the stream a thumbs up, that means so, so much. I know that when I tune into videos, I'm also, I'm, sometimes I'm a silent watcher, right? So like I don't comment, but I've gotten now that I have my own YouTube channel, I definitely like will leave thumbs up on everything I watch because I know like how much those little thumbs up mean. So if you're here, if you could give it a thumbs up. That's all I ask. But um, yeah, so if you haven't met me, my name is Natalie. Like I said, talk about all things related to the British royal family on the Canary and Crown. I do a lot of different videos. I've done videos on like um, the different homes of the royals. So I recently did a video on Clarence House, which is great. Learned a lot about that. That's the home of the king and queen consort. And I've done one on Frogmore Cottage, which has been hot um, since what's been happening with Meghan and Harry and them moving out and just how everyone's kind of playing musical homes in the royal family right now. I've done a video on Adelaide Cottage. That one's gotten a lot of views. That is the home of... Um, Prince William and Prince Cap Princess Catherine and their three children. So that's a great video. If you haven't seen that one, check it out if you're interested in that kind of thing. And then I recently did a video about the coronation coming up and everything that we know about it so far and talked a little bit about the history and that kind of stuff. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. But I am going to talk about some of that today on the live stream and I also want to talk about the new Duke of Edinburgh. So I'm excited about this. I, who else is anybody else excited about? I want to see if I can see the comments here and see if you guys leave a comment. If you're excited about the fact that Prince Edward is finally the Duke of Edinburgh. I think for a little bit, we were like, hmm, is that really going to happen? What's going on? Because after the, after the queen passed back in September, there was not a lot of like new titles being doled out, not a lot of changes, of course, right away during the king's first address to the nation. He right away was like, of course, Prince William, new um, Prince of Wales, Princess Catherine, new Princess of Wales, like that was right away. But there wasn't a lot of other titles that came out right away. So, um, you know, we've been kind of waiting and waiting and then just the other day on Prince Edward's 59th birthday, it was announced that he did receive the title of the Duke of Edinburgh. So very exciting for 
Edward and definitely exciting for Sophie as well. I think it's a very, very cool thing because Sophie and Edward are kind of like the silent, like they're the hard workers who are like in the background, right? So they're off in the background doing their thing, working hard, serving the monarchy, but not always getting all of the press because we see like a ton of press is always going to the king and the queen consort. And we see a ton of press going to um, Prince uh, William, Princess Catherine. And unfortunately, there's a ton of press always directed at Harry and Meghan because they always have something going on, not necessarily good press lately. But we don't see Sophie and Edward and Princess Anne. We don't see them getting the press that they really deserve. So I'm excited that they're finally getting some press. They're finally getting recognized for all of their hard work. And what I think is interesting about the Duke of Edinburgh title is it's, it's truly just a title, but it's one of the most senior titles um, when it comes to royal titles. And it's not associated with any sort of land holding or anything like that. So I looked it up just to be sure. The Duke of Edinburgh is named after the city of Edinburgh in Scotland. It's a substantive title that's been created four times since 1726 for members of the British royal family but it does not include any territorial land holdings and does not produce any revenue for the title holder. So it's not like, let's say the Duke of Cornwall, who is Prince William now holds that title, um, that has a duchy associated with it. It has land holdings. It has a whole entire basically organization associated with it that produces income and that income then supports all of the um the prince the prince of wales all of his charity work and and basically supports his family so there's no with this title there's no like special duchy associated it's just a title and it is again it's a very high title for the royal family and the last person to hold the title was of course prince ed or prince philip who is prince edward's father. So it's very special because it's been passed from his father to him. And of course, it is a high title. And I was also really interested to find out what are all of the royal dukedoms. And I was thinking about them. And I was like trying to brainstorm, okay, who who are all of the royal dukes? And there's really not all that many. So there's the obvious one, which is um, the, the royal dukedoms are Let's see, the obvious is the Duke of Cornwall. So the Duke of Cornwall is the Prince of Wales. So that's Prince William. He holds that title. He also holds, holds the title of Duke of Rothesay. And I don't know if I pronounced that uh, correctly. It's a Scottish title. The Duke of and the Duke of Cambridge. So he has all of those right now. And then, of course, the Duke of Sussex is Prince Harry. There's the Duke of York, which is Prince um, Andrew. And then there's the Duke of Edinburgh, who is now Prince Edward. The Duke of Gloucester, which is Prince Richard, who we do see him um, when there's royal events. And then we do also see the Duke of Kent, who is held by Prince Edward, the different Prince Edward. <laughs> so who the Duke of Kent is actually a cousin of Queen Elizabeth II. So, so yeah, so those are all of the royal dukedoms. And but then there's a ton of non-royal dukedoms there's i mean there are 24 of them so um these are the dukedoms that um these dukes they will be present at the coronation and actually part of the actual coronation is when the dukes the earls everyone who holds titles within the country will there, there's actually a part of the the ceremony where they have to pledge their allegiance to the king, which I think is very, no, this is, don't judge me, but have, if you guys have ever watched um, Game of Thrones, there's always kind of that when there's a change, right? There's a change in the the leader, the monarch, then they get all of the, um, the leaders of the country together, all of their dukes or different leaders of the portions of their counties or whatever together and they all have to say hey are you standing by this person are you going to support this new king this new queen whatever there are beheadings involved in 
you know, Game of Thrones. I don't think that's going to happen <laughs> now, but um, it's it's kind of fun. So anyways, if you, if you haven't watched Game of Thrones, I highly recommend it. So um, yeah, so there's lots of different dukedoms. We will see all of these dukes at the coronation. And yeah, I just thought it was really interesting to kind of dig more into that. And then the other thing that's interesting is dukes can wear not crowns, but it looks like a crown. It's called a coronet. Um, and so I'm wondering, and those can only be worn at a coronation. So I'm wondering if we're going to actually see any coronets worn at the coronation. I don't know. So I think if you look back, and I had been looking at a lot of like the old pictures from Queen Elizabeth's coronation, I did see, you know, a lot of the traditional uh, garb and also the coronets worn then. So we'll see what happens because there's been like, you know, some rumblings that maybe King Charles isn't going to be following like the exact way that it was done in 1953. So um, we know like the guest list is going to be a lot smaller than it was in 1953. 1953, there were over 8,000 people all jam packed into um, Westminster Abbey. And they actually had closed the Abbey months in advance just so they could create like special scaffolding and bleachers and seating for all of these extra people, not extra, but all of the people that were invited to the coronation. So they had to do a ton of work, but they've changed it this time around. They've decreased the number of people that are going to be invited to just 2000 people. So they really had to slim down that guest list. So it will be interesting to see which 2000 people made the cut. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there waiting for their invitation and, and maybe haven't received it. But, um, you know, it's going to be a mix of dignitaries and um, members of the royal family, of course, politicians. Um, and then, of course, all those people that hold titles. So it's, it's going to be it's going to be fascinating to see. I'm really excited about it because this could be in my lifetime. I'm, I'm hoping that I will see at least two coronations. I hope to see King Charles's and then when uh, Prince William becomes king. I hope to see that. He and I are about the same age. So um, I hope that that happens, that that I'm witness to that. But this could be a once in a lifetime um, thing for a lot of people. I mean, it, when you think about that, the last time we had one was 1953. So it's a very, very unique experience. I, I wish I could be there in person. But at the same time, I think getting the bird's eye view and being able to see everything up close on camera is going to be um, just as but not just as amazing, but very, very cool. So we don't know what time is going to be at yet. They haven't released that unless I had just haven't seen it in the last couple of days. But um, it's going to be on May 6th, which is a Saturday. So since uh, the UK is quite a bit ahead of me, I'm sure I'll be waking up in like the middle of the morning or the middle of wee hours of the morning, so the night before, for me um, to watch it, but I do want to watch it live. I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm like, I don't want to be late to the party. You know, I want to see what's happening. So I've done a, like, a lot of prep work, like I'm prepping myself. So I know what I'm seeing when, you know, things are going on and I know a little bit of history and yeah, so I can just get the most out of it. I'm very excited to see what people are wearing. So I, I know that I think tiaras are going to be coming out and probably some pretty beautiful gowns. I can't wait to see, of course, what Princess Catherine is wearing. Um, you know, she's always a star. She always shines and she always looks amazing. So really going to be keeping an eye on her. And of well, you know, if I think Harry's going to attend for sure. Um, I don't know if Megan's going to go, but that's going to be interesting too to see. Uh, what Megan looks like, what she wears, if she's allowed to wear a tiara, if um, that if they are wearing tiaras, where they're going to be seated, all that. So that's a whole lot of drama, you know. I try to steer clear a little bit of that drama, um, because you know people have really strong feelings about uh, Harry and Megan either way. So I try to like address the drama, but also try to look at both sides, try to, I don't know, I'm kind of, I, I really just wish they could all just get along, you know, but um, 
I, you know, I, if you love Harry and Meghan, great. If you don't love Harry and Meghan, great. You know, like it's, it's okay. We don't have to, we don't have to choose sides. Um, I'm just here for the, for the Royals, you know, just to, to see what's, what's happening with them and, and report on them basically. So um, I know some reporters out there are like really strong feelings, but I, I try not to get a little. I, I don't know. I don't want to get on rants about anybody because it's not fair either. Um, so anyway, so what do we know about the coronation until June May 6th? We don't know the time yet. We know that um, there's different parts of the coronation that take place. It is at Westminster Abbey. It's always at Westminster Abbey. It's been at Westminster Abbey since 1066. So, and it's um, always officiated by the... Um, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who is also the same Archbishop who married Harry and Meghan back in 2018. Um, he will be overseeing the service and the service includes very distinct parts of it. I mentioned there's the recognition part where um, everyone gathered at the Abbey will actually shout God save the king and trumpets will sound. There's a part where all of the dukes and those who hold titles basically pledge their allegiance to the king. And you'll remember, well, I don't remember because I wasn't there, but back in 1953 at Queen Elizabeth's um, coronation, there's actually a portion where the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, he, you know, um, basically bowed to the queen and gave his allegiance to her and his lifelong support to her and her role as the monarch. So that was a pretty touching moment. Not sure because it's a little bit different with the queen consort. I'm not sure if that would is necessarily how it will happen with Camilla. Now she will also be crowned during the ceremony and she will also be anointed. So the anointing is a really interesting part of the ceremony. Um, it's when he sits on the coronation chair, which is that 700 year old chair um, that's been used in coronation. So for over 700 years, um, and he will sit on that and then a gold cloth or a canopy is put over the monarch's head to kind of conceal the king from view. And this was the one part back in 1953 that was not televised. So the BBC televised Queen Elizabeth's coronation, but they cut out this one part where she was being anointed because it's thought to be very, very sacred. So it's going to be interesting to find out if they televise this portion or don't televise it, or if they're able to like conceal it a little bit more. Um, but during this anointing, the archbishop will anoint the king's hands, breast, and head and they do it with the oil that was um actually blessed in the holy oil it was blessed in jerusalem last week so it's all ready to go um and it's a secret recipe but it's uh it contains orange flowers roses jasmine and cinnamon and the oil that was created for king charles will not contain any ingredients derived from animals so this is really interesting because King Charles is a vegetarian and we all know that he's very much into health and holistic living, um, very much into gardening. So he has this special formula that is vegan for his anointing. So this is new, a new thing. And then when they anoint the monarch, they use this thing called the coronation spoon. So I had pictures of it in my coronation details video, but the coronation spoon is this relic. It's basically a gold spoon that they use and very pretty. It uh, is part of what's called the coronation regalia. So that includes the orb, the two scepters, the St. Edward's crown and the Imperial state crown, all of the things that are used in the coronation and when they're not being used in the coronation they are actually housed in the tower of london so we know that several weeks ago saint edward's crown the imperial state crown and queen mary's crown were removed from the tower of london so that alterations could be made to those crowns prior to coronation day 
So another really interesting thing about St. Edward's crown it is a crown that is only used at the coronation and only used at the time of crowning. So it's a larger, very ornate crown that was um, actually created in 1600s, um, 1661. Um, so it is a very large, it's a larger, it's a taller crown. And you may have seen pictures of Queen Elizabeth wearing this crown. And like I said, it's only used at the time of crowning in that significant moment where the crown is placed upon the monarch's head, where the full authority of the monarchy is given to that person. So it's a very, very, very special um, crown. It contains the largest colorless cut diamond in the world. It's 530.2 carats. Um, and it was discovered in 1905 in South Africa. So very interesting. Um, yeah, so that's the crown that's going to be used for crowning. And then a lot of people recognize the monarch's crown as the state imperial crown. Now that's the crown, if you think back to the queen's funeral back in September, when she had her, her um, coffin draped the crown, the imperial state crown sat atop her coffin and like at the funeral and when it was transported. So that's the crown that the monarch wears after the coronation and to state events like the opening of parliament. And that crown, um, the king will wear as he leaves Westminster Abbey and goes back to Buckingham Palace. So really interesting. I didn't realize that there were these two different crowns. So I learned a lot about that. That was a really cool fact that I learned. So, so yeah, I'm excited to see the, just see this all happening the day of the coronation to see how it all turns out. And as I, I did mention, so the King is crowned, but then also, um, the queen consort Camilla, she's going to be crowned using queen Mary's crown and she's also going to be anointed. So that's going to be a different part of the ceremony that, didn't take place in 1953. So it'll be interesting to see the differences. Another thing that I found interesting was that um, Camilla, she has five grandchildren. Yes, she has five grandchildren and they're all teenagers. And it's been reported that they are going to have the job of holding the golden canopy over her when she gets anointed. So it'll be interesting to see that because we don't really see them in the media. Not that we should. I mean, um, I think that they deserve their privacy, but it's kind of neat to see that she's going to have her grandchildren incorporated into the ceremony and that they'll be given a role. We know that Prince George is going to be given a role. Not sure what that will be, but that makes sense seeing as he is the heir to the throne following his father, Prince William. And I have a feeling Princess Charlotte will be in attendance. I don't think Prince Louis will be there. I think he's probably still a little bit too young. He's just going to be five. And we saw from last summer with the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, um, he's a lot of fun. And he's he's just, you know, acts, he's just cute. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Um, but probably not going to do great at Westminster Abbey for who knows how long. The Queen's coronation was three hours. Um, it's been rumored that it's not going to be as long as a coronation this time around for the king. But I still think that's a really long time for kids to sit through. And Prince Charles actually attended not all, but a portion of his mother's coronation. And at the time, he was four. And uh, there's a very cute picture of him, like kind of like this, um, on putting his like hand in his head hand or his head in his hands, like just hanging out, um, looking extremely bored. Um, and he was between the queen mother and princess Margaret. And it's a very, very cute picture, but I think that's how a lot of kids would probably feel attending the coronation. So, um, yeah, so I don't expect Prince Louis to be there. And then there was a big article and I did a short video about it, about how, um, some news outlets were doing this headline that said, like Lily and Archie not invited, but Camilla's grandchildren are. Well, there's a huge age difference between those kids. And it's not that Lily and Archie weren't invited. They were just deemed too young to attend by the palace, which 
makes sense, um, I think. But after the coronation, there are usually some portraits taken. And we've seen the portraits um, that are usually taken at Buckingham Palace in the throne room. Uh, so like King George VI had these portraits done. And then of course, Queen Elizabeth had them done. So I, I imagine that King Charles will have them done and they will be more of like the family portraits. So I'm sure all of the younger children will be there and hopefully we'll get included in those portraits as well. So we'll see what happens. I saw some chatter on the internet about like, do you think Meghan and Harry will be included in the portraits? And I think if there's a family, like a family portrait, of course they'll be included in the portrait. But if it's like a portrait like they did with um, just Prince William and, and Princess Catherine and then like their kids, I think that that will be a separate portrait because we know that King Charles has really been trying to focus a lot of attention on just the very slimmed down monarchy, the heirs to the throne. So I think there will just be a couple of different portraits taken, but I don't think that if Harry and Meghan do attend that they will be left out. Despite, I know, lots of feelings. I know there's lots of feelings on that and I get it. Um, so, but I don't think they will be left out if they are there. And then there's speculation that the royal family said or have indicated that they hope that Harry and Meghan are seated in Iceland, which I'm guessing means far away. Although Iceland is a great place. I used to live there. So, you know, don't say anything bad about Iceland. But, um, or Iceland mean, maybe meaning because they're going to be frozen out of the fam while they're at Westminster Abbey. But since... Uh, Prince Harry is a duke. And at, if you look at um, Queen Elizabeth's coronation, all of the dukes and earls and those that held titles actually had a pretty prominent location. And there is that part of the ceremony where they have to pledge their allegiance to the monarch. So I would think that Harry, because he does still hold his title, his title has not been taken away. I would think that he would be intermixed with that group of people. I don't know if that means that he would be separated from Megan. I don't know. I don't know. We will see. It's going to be interesting. Cannot wait to see. So yeah. So if you guys are watching, make sure you give the stream a thumbs up because this is my very first stream I've ever done. So it's a little bit scary, but I appreciate everybody who is watching. I've seen a couple of people watching. So thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate you. And yeah, I've just been talking about the coronation, when it's going to happen, what we know about it, and talking about um, how Prince Edward is now the Duke of Edinburgh, which is awesome. So happy for him and Sophie, the new Duchess. You know, another thing that I saw, and I would love if somebody knows more about this, um, because I'd love to dig into the facts around this, because I think it is steeped in tradition. So when Prince Edward became the Duke of Edinburgh, his title of the Earl of Wessex was passed down to his son, James. And so he became the Earl of Wessex. But um, his daughter, um, Louise, I'm totally losing my train of thought. She did her title didn't change at all. So she is still Lady Louise Wessex, but she doesn't become a countess. So I, I feel like, and I saw something come up about this, that it's a very like antiquated, very old, seeped in tradition type of um, decision or way that it passes, you know, from male to male, the primogeniture, I guess, um, is it the way that it passes? And like, is that fair to Lady Louise? Because she is older than James. Um, so I think that's really interesting, especially since the laws changed around the um, the line of succession, right? So when Princess Anne was born, she um, became succeeded by her brother, Prince Andrew, when he was born. So it went, you know, Prince Charles, Princess Anne, um, until Prince Andrew was born, and then he bumped above her in the line of succession. And then when Prince Edward was born, he bumped to just under Andrew. But that has changed because if you look at the line of succession now, um, Princess Charlotte 
falls right under Prince George and Prince Louis does not outrank Princess Charlotte. So that line of succession has changed, which I think is amazing, which I think is great. Um, but it hasn't changed in all cases. So I know that there was a, oh, I'm going to lose my thought on the, what it's called. It was basically an amendment um, that was made and it was made after Princess Anne was born, which is why the line of succession still stands the way that it is um, where she falls under her brothers. So really, really interesting. So I'd love to see Lady Louise become the countess. That would be that would be great. Um, but yeah, if anybody knows anything about that, I'd love to hear. I'll probably do some research on that because uh, I love to find out like the, the facts and really, you know, make sure that I'm um, putting the right stuff out there because I'm learning too. I'm definitely learning too. So yeah, so I think that, I mean, that was a good first stream, I think. I think it was, I don't know, pretty good. I hope you guys liked it. I'll probably try to do more in the future, um, just as a different way to interact, a different way to get to know people. So if you're watching the replay, if you could give it a thumbs up, I would be forever grateful. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and click subscribe so you can start to grow our community here on the Canary and Crown. I really appreciate you because every like, every subscribe, every every view, I mean, just everything, every minute you watch, it just means the world to me. I am so grateful um, because growing a YouTube channel, it's a lot harder than it looks. So yeah, so I'm grateful for you. So thank you guys so much for watching and keep an eye out for my next video. Uh, follow my shorts. I do a ton of shorts content. So keep up with me there and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.